So if you guys only have the Raspberry Pi Zero W and don't have any of these accessories, I will leave a link down in the description below to where you can pick up a Raspberry Pi Zero W starter kit, which contains most of the stuff you see here, except for the SD card. I'll leave a separate link for that. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's put on the heatsink on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Okay, so you will be peeling off this paper here and you see the adhesive right there. And then you're gonna go ahead and put this heatsink on this chip right here on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have it in a good spot just like this, you're gonna wanna go ahead and hold it down here, apply some pressure for about a minute or so. Okay, now that we have our heatsink on, we're gonna go ahead and put in the micro SD card we see right here. So we're gonna go on this side and put the micro SD card facing up just like this and go ahead and slide it in. Okay, so once you have the heatsink and the SD card, now we're gonna wanna put it in our protective case so that our Raspberry Pi Zero W doesn't get damaged. So if you order the kit from the description down below, you'll get this case. And what you wanna do is you see this opening here, you wanna align it with these holes right here on top. So you'll see these little cylinders in there. They're gonna just pop into the holes here. I recommend that you put an angle with the ports just like that in the openings and then you go ahead and push down and you'll hear it kind of snap in and there it is it's gonna look just like that okay once it's inside the case you're gonna want to go ahead and put the top cover on just like that so you'll get a protective case that looks just like this, you'll be able to access the mini HDMI as far as these two micro USB connections. In the bottom, you'll have this opening here. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need to connect is this HDMI adapter. And so that's gonna go right here and you're just gonna align it the way it goes and stick it in. And you don't have to push very far at all. Next in line is the micro USB adapter so that we can connect our keyboard. So notice that there are two connections here and the one on the left is for USB devices such as keyboard, mouse and so on, or you can even plug in a USB hub. The one on the right is for connecting power. So make sure that you connect this to the one on the left. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. There we go, just like that. Finally, we have our wall adapter and we're gonna go ahead and connect it to the power connector right here. So let's go ahead and do that now. And there we go. Now you have everything you're gonna need to set up the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Okay, to set up your Raspberry Pi Zero W, we are gonna need to install an operating system on it. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on the computer and I'm gonna show you guys how to install Raspbian operating system onto the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So actually before we move forward with installing the Raspbian operating system on the Raspberry Pi Zero W's SD card, we're gonna have to take out the micro SD card from the case and use a micro SD card adapter that we will then plug into our SD card reader. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take out the SD card. And you will need to unplug everything you plugged in. Then just give it a little tap from behind here. And we're gonna go ahead and pull out the SD card. We will then put the micro SD card in the adapter and we're gonna go ahead and use an SD card reader to plug this in to our computer so that we can install the operating system on it. So let's go ahead and get on the computer to do that now. Okay, so I'll be showing you how to install the Raspbian operating system to be used on your Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go to raspberrypi.org and go ahead and click on download. So once you're on this page, you're going to want to select the Raspberry Pi imager that works for your operating system on your computer. For me, it's Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and select that one. And then you're going to want to go ahead and click save. Once it finishes downloading, you're going to want to go ahead and click run. And just go ahead and click yes for any security prompts. Go ahead and click install. Okay, once it finishes, make sure that this checkbox is checked and click finish. Now you're gonna see the Raspberry Imager come on your screen and you're gonna wanna go under Choose OS. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna format the SD card 
to make sure that there's nothing on it and that you're not gonna have any problems down the line because it was not formatted correctly. So go down to erase and say format card is FAT32. And then we're gonna wanna choose our SD card. So right here, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're very careful and we don't select another drive because this will delete the contents of the drive if you choose the wrong one. So I know for sure that my SD card is located on drive K, which is 64 gigabytes in size. So I'm gonna go ahead and select drive K for me. Once you've selected your operating system and SD card, you're gonna wanna go ahead and click on write. So as you can see, this process doesn't take too long and it has already erased the contents of the SD card and formatted it as FAT32. So go ahead and click continue. Now we get to the point where we're gonna click on operating system and we're gonna select our operating system that we wanna install on the SD card. So you have a few different options for the operating system here, such as Raspbian and Ubuntu. For this video, we're gonna install Raspbian. For Raspbian, you have a few different options. You have the recommended Raspbian Pi desktop image, which includes a desktop software, or you can click under Raspbian Other and you can select Raspbian Lite, which does not include the desktop software or you can install Raspbian full image. So in my particular case, I'm gonna be installing Raspbian on my Raspberry Pi Zero W and most of the projects I'm gonna work on don't require me to use the desktop software on Raspbian. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Raspbian Lite. Once you've selected your operating system, go to choose SD card. So again, we're gonna choose our SD card and make sure not to click on any of the other drives, only your SD card drive. So in my case, it's the K drive that has my 64 gigabyte SD card. Once I've selected the operating system SD card, go ahead and click on write. Now this part's gonna take a little while, so go ahead and grab a drink, come back, and it should be done by then. Okay, as we can see, it's finishing the writing stage. Now it's gonna go through the verifying stage to make sure that the data that was written is written correctly. All right, as you can see on the screen here, we have successfully installed Raspbian Lite operating system on our SD card. Now you can go ahead and click continue. And now you can go ahead and unplug your SD card and go ahead and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. Okay, now that we have Raspbian operating system installed on our micro SD card, we're gonna go ahead and insert it back into our Raspberry Pi Zero W. And we're gonna go ahead and put in the slot right here. Okay, so once you install that micro SD card, go ahead and put Raspberry Pi Zero W back in the case if you have one. So go ahead and just snap it in. Put back the top cover. Connect the HDMI adapter. Connect the micro USB to full size USB adapter onto the left micro USB connector. And finally connect your wall adapter onto the micro USB connector all the way on the right hand side. So just like this. Now that we have our accessories connected, you're gonna go ahead and connect your monitor via HDMI cable to here. You're gonna wanna go ahead and connect your USB keyboard to here. And then you'll wanna connect your wall adapter to your wall electrical outlet. And don't forget that if you got the same kit that I did, it has a power switch. Don't forget to flip it on once you have everything connected. Okay, let's move on to the final step of setting up your Raspberry Pi Zero W. And that is to boot up Raspbian on your Raspberry Pi Zero W and set up the operating system. So this is changing the default password. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so in this last step of setting up your Raspberry Pi Zero W, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Raspberry Pi Zero W and go ahead and let the Raspberry operating system boot up. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the switch now and you'll see this screen with the colors that's normal. And on the top left, you see the little Raspberry up there and you're just gonna see some stuff scrolling on the screen that's totally normal. Just go ahead and wait until you see a login prompt. Okay, so once Raspbian has finished setting up all the services, it's gonna go ahead and prompt you for a username and password. So at the login prompt, go ahead and type in the default user of Pi. So that's just PI. And the default password we're gonna type in is Raspberry. So that's just R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And then go ahead and press enter. So you can see here it's logging us in and we get a shell prompt. Okay, and after you've logged in, you're gonna wanna run the Raspberry Pi software configuration utility. In order to do that, you're gonna wanna type in sudo raspy-config and then go ahead and press enter. So that'll bring you to this screen right here. The very first thing you're gonna wanna do is change the default password to something else. Okay, so go ahead and select option number one to change our password and press enter. So press okay. And now you're gonna wanna type in a good secure password. So go ahead and type that in now. After you finish typing your password, go ahead and press enter. 
and then go ahead and type it in one more time. And then press enter one more time. Okay, we've now changed our default password to something more secure. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go to our network settings, make sure we have our network set up. So go down to option number two, network options and press enter. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is change the host name to something we're gonna recognize our network. So go ahead and press enter on host name. Okay, so just make a note of the limitations on the host name that you can enter and press okay. So right now the default name is Raspberry Pi. I do have other Raspberry Pi devices, so I'm gonna name mine Raspberry Pi Zero. And then I'm gonna press tab and then press enter to go to okay. Now we're back at the main screen. We're gonna go back to network options. And then we're gonna set up our Wi-Fi. Your Raspberry Pi Zero W comes with Wi-Fi. So you're gonna wanna select this option to set up your Wi-Fi and go ahead and set it up so that it connects to your home Wi-Fi. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and enter the password when it prompts you. So you will have to enter your country. So for me, it's the United States. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter on that. And then press okay. Now on this screen, you're gonna wanna type in the name of your Wi-Fi network. So if your Wi-Fi network is Joe's network, that's what you would type in here. So let's just go ahead and type that in. And then you would just press okay. And then when you prompt it, go ahead and type in the password for your home network. Now one important note before moving forward is if you have a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network, it will not work with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Make sure you use the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Okay, so on this screen, go ahead and enter the password for your Wi-Fi network and then press the enter key. Okay, so one final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enable the SSH service, which is gonna allow us to remotely connect to our Raspberry Pi Zero W. So to do that, you're gonna wanna go down to interfacing options, press enter and go to SSH. On this screen, you're gonna be asked if you wanna enable SSH server, you're gonna wanna go ahead and select yes by using the arrow keys and then press enter. And it's gonna take a moment to enable SSH. Once this is enabled and your Raspberry Pi Zero W is on your Wi-Fi network, you should be able to connect to it from other devices using any SSH client. This will allow you to remotely issue commands and restart your Raspberry Pi Zero W as needed. Okay, and that does it for setting up your Raspberry Pi Zero W. Go ahead and go down to finish. And it's gonna ask you to reboot. So go ahead and press the enter key to reboot so that all your settings are set into effect. Okay, now that we've logged in once again, we're gonna go ahead and try to see if we now have internet connectivity on our Raspberry Pi Zero W. So again, we're gonna use the ping command and we're just gonna ping www.yahoo.com. Okay, so after some troubleshooting, I think I figured out what's going on and why I can't connect to my Wi-Fi. And that's because when I type in the password, the characters that show up are not the correct characters. That means that my keyboard layout is not set up correctly. So this is one important step that you need to make sure that you do, otherwise you're gonna have problems with your Raspberry Pi Zero W. Again, we're gonna wanna go to our Raspberry Pi software configuration utility, and we're gonna wanna go down to option number four, which is localization options. So go ahead and press enter there. Okay, and this is the important setting. You're gonna wanna go to change keyboard layout. So go to change keyboard layout, and as you can see, the default setting is generic 105 key PC international. We don't want international. I'm gonna go ahead and select the keyboard layout for my region, which is the United States. So it should be something like English, United States. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a quick look. Okay, so this is the important setting you need to change. As you can see, the default is generic, 105 key PC international. We don't want the international, especially the, if you live in the US, uh, because that's gonna just mess you up. So go to generic 104 key PC and go ahead and press enter. So the one without international. And then when you get to the keyboard layout, you're gonna wanna go to other. So go to other. And then you're gonna wanna select English US, not the UK one. If you live in the United States, that is. 
and then go ahead keyboard layout English US press OK and then for this question you just want to go ahead and select the default for the keyboard layout press OK again for this question just press OK it does take a little while to configure that so don't worry your Raspberry Pi 0 is not frozen so once you do that go ahead and press tab to tap twice to go to finish and let's reboot our Raspberry Pi Key. Now that we rebooted the Raspberry Pi Zero, we're going to go ahead and go to the configuration utility again. So we're going to type in sudo raspy-config. And now we're going to go to our network options and we're going to go ahead and set up our Wi-Fi again. So go ahead and press enter. And this one you're going to type in the SSID or the network name of your Wi-Fi network. So let's say it's Joe's network. And then you're going to go ahead and press OK. Okay, now you're going to type in the password for your Wi-Fi network. And then you're going to go ahead and press OK. Okay, once you do that, you're going to go ahead and press tab twice, finish. And let's reboot one more time for good measure. Make, make sure that all the configurations take place. Okay, so now finally we're going to test to see if we have internet connection on our Raspberry Pi Zero W. So let's go ahead and test it with the ping command. So I'm going to just ping the www.yahoo.com server. It's kind of pausing a little. I'm not sure if it's working or not. And there we go. We finally have internet connection. So hopefully I saved you guys a lot of trouble because I wasted a lot of time trying to get my Wi-Fi to work. In the end, it was because my password contains some special characters. And because of my keyboard layout, by default was set up to an international keyboard layout that password didn't match up with what was set on my Wi-Fi router so by changing my keyboard layout that solved my problem and hopefully it solved yours so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you guys next time